Right after the election, some Harris voters, Trump haters, and Hollywood celebrities threatened to leave the country. We've heard it all before. In fact, one of the most read stories in the Washington Post after the election was essentially a guide on how to do it. Well, Armand Artan founded a company that helps those who want to leave for good get out. And he joins us right here on the National News Desk live from Berlin, Germany. Good morning to you, sir. Thanks for joining us here. Good morning. You know, Thank wanted, you for having me. I wanted to talk to you because you have a deep understanding of immigration law. You were born in Eastern Europe, educated in North Africa, France, and Canada. Your wife is German. Uh, you've lived with your children and wife uh, in Dubai. Talk about the unique perspective you have with international travel, period, and dual citizenship. First, thank you for having me. I think uh, the topic is uh, of uh, very relevance in today's world. For myself, I can say that in my family, from uh, the last four generations, we have experienced every form of migration, from forced migration when my grand-grandparents immigrated the Armenian refugee uh, crisis in the beginning of the century, to my parents who uh, immigrated from Eastern Europe to Canada, and myself who now live in Dubai and Germany by choice. Um, so I truly understand relocating every 15 years or every generation uh, into a different continent and what that means in terms of mobility, freedom, and how to really identify yourself as a citizen of the world or a global citizen. Searches for leaving the country here in America after Trump won began to trend right after the election. I know you've, you've seen this before. This is nothing new. Of course, GOP voters came out wanting to help those unhappy Americans leave. And one of the many articles about leaving the country, five countries were highlighted for their immigration process. It was Portugal, Canada, Australia, the U.S., and the UAE, the United Arab Emirates. Which country is the easiest, and what are some of the challenges? Well, I have to say that we have seen this before. I've been doing this for 20 years, and our company have seen every time when there is U.S. elections, but especially in the last three ones, uh, a highest number of Republicans or Democrats who would say, if A win, I will leave. And this time, definitely, the gap was... Uh, very uh, extrapolated. 58% of, uh, of Democrats said if Trump wins, we'll leave. Would I think, I think really? it was half of Los Angeles, I think, at one point that said they would, they would leave if he won, which some Californians are like, get out, that'll change the electoral in the future. Anyway. Well, except Eva Longoria, a dear friend of mine who I know lives outside of U.S. since, um, let's see how many will follow. But the options are very broad. Europe, I say, as a country, as a continent, is really a destination that Americans love to have a second home and access to a residency and citizenship. Portugal, Greece, Italy, great lifestyle. Dubai has attracted a lot of the ultra high network people around the world in the last post COVID years with extremely easy way of life, low taxes or no taxes, and very fast procedure to getting a 10 year residence called the golden visa. So I would say those are the most popular ones. Canada, for those who really want to relocate and be stay close in the same time zone as the US is uh, an obvious choice. And the other extreme is Australia and New Zealand. Walk us through this process. Where do you begin? What are some common mistakes? How do you avoid pitfalls? Well, first of all, there is different categories of people who are looking for these choices from the high network who can afford to make an investment and really accelerate that path uh, to making an investment in any of those jurisdictions. So they have to select the right provider and advisor. There is few companies out in the world who are really at the same level of reputation and credibility as us. Uh, we're financially regulated in Canada and really know how to advise on financial instruments that will open up the world for you. Those who don't have the financial means are really going through another process, which is citizenship by descent. So anybody with a background in Portugal, in Spain, in Ireland, in Hungary can go and acquire citizenship because their grandparents came from there. So that is a much longer process. It doesn't cost you anything, but we are seeing a higher number as well of people searching and really finding the right advisor in those options. Armand, I want to talk very quickly about this, um, this platform that you operate. It's the world's leading global mobility intelligence platform. It's called the Passport Index. What is this and what's the purpose? So even though I started with a very bad passport myself with a Bulgarian, I have today eight passports. So. I can travel to 92% of the world without visa, but the ever-changing visa restrictions, electronic ETAs and e-visas are making it very complicated, even with a great or multiple passports to know where you can land without visa and without the ETA approvals. So five years ago, we created that platform that more than 180 million people are using to know where can you travel today 
without any visa or visa on arrival, and you can just take your plane. People start comparing multiple passports. Countries start comparing how good are their passports. And to the big surprise, American passport is not the best in the world. We hopefully, Trump will make it the best in the world. But in the meantime, the United Arab Emirates is a country that five years ago took the decision to make their passport the best. And today they have the greatest mobility and freedom to travel. What does it mean by the best? Very quickly, what do you mean by the best? How do you become, how does it become the best? Why is it the best? Where can your passport take you without requirement of any visa? I see. So it's a very objective, 199 countries. I see. And 182 you can access today with the best passport. Interesting. Founder of uh, Arts and Capital, we appreciate you joining us this morning. It's a fascinating conversation and I know you've had You've had some Americans uh, probably uh, calling you, you. Trying, to, <laughs> trying to get out. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you for having me again, Ian. Thank you.